What is going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Game Maker tutorial and this is going to be our 13th part of our Minecraft series. And today what we're going to be doing is looking at fixing a small glitch that a lot of people have been worried about and also adding on a day and night cycle to our game. So this glitch I'm talking about is basically when, let, let me go and run the game here, see if we can find it. So it's basically when two chunks intersect or, uh, or another chunk is loaded, there is that like sort of pixel offset that we get. And that is because the code I have there kind of cancels out and doesn't really do much. Uh, and I made a mistake with, with my first, so okay, here we go right here. So as you can see, we have, it's not perfectly aligned. There is that little pixel gap. And people have said that it has caused errors with water and all of that stuff. So we're gonna fix that. So really the only way, or, or the not the only way, but the, the simplest way to do this is in, go into our generate script here. And instead of sh equals, you know, this divided by 32, blah, 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 just say move underscore snap 32, 32. Copy that, go into our snow, put it there, and go into our sand, whoops, and go right there. All right, so that should actually fix that. So that is a very simple fix, and everything should be good. So let me go and run the game one more time just to see if it did in fact fix it. Oh, and we're getting an error here. All right, so that, that was because I was using the new Yo-Yo compiler, which is very, very buggy at, at this time. But So let's go ahead and, whoa, holy trees. All right, so let's, um, let me go over here, and we'll just try and find a chunk. And I believe that's a chunk right there. But let's just keep going on. Do, 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 do. We shouldn't actually be able to find anything, so I should be able to go on for for a long time here without finding any of that pixely glitch. Yep, so here we go. So now it's perfectly aligned with the 32 by 32. All right, sounds good. So let's continue on now. So now what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and created something called SBR background. And here it has what we're gonna see in the daytime, and then here is the nighttime. So it's just a small gradient difference. All right, and these are, it's all just as image index zero, image index one, and yeah, so basically the idea is we're gonna have this always being there, but this is just going to overlay it, our first image, and it's going to slowly fade away. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an object here, and this is gonna be called OBJ background. It's not going to have a sprite, and in the create event, I'm going to set image speed to equal zero. And then I'm also going to say uh, create a variable called global.alpha, and this equals one. Now this is going to be the alpha that our first image actually holds, and we're going to decrease it as we go. All right, so now in the draw event here, first off, I'm going to say draw sprite, And this is gonna be SBR background. Image index of one, and we're gonna set it to view underscore X view zero, and view underscore Y view zero. So it's always gonna be there. And then I'm gonna copy this, paste it down, and I'm gonna do underscore EXT because we're gonna need the other values here. So we're gonna say one, one, rotation zero, color C white, and our alpha is going to be global.alpha. And our image index is going to be zero. So code does get compiled from top to bottom. So basically, it's go always going to draw this over this. All right, so when this does start to fade out eventually, it's going to reveal our second background, which is our night background. So we want to put that in the game here and run it. Let it compile. So now as, um, uh, wait, why are we falling? Oh, right, because we need to actually set the depth 
of our object to 99999, so it's all the way on the bottom, so it's always underneath our layers. We weren't actually falling, um, but it, it appeared like that because the, the background was above our blocks. So here we go. We now have the background behind us, you know, with the white and then fades to the blue, and it looks good. All right, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is just create a cycle. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to set alarm 0 to equal, and you're going to say 15 times 30. And what this basically means is every 15 seconds, the day and night cycle is going to happen. So if you want it to happen, you know, every minute, then you put 60. Okay, so that's just, you know, how I do that. So just for the sake of the tutorial, it's going to be every 15 seconds. So in our alarm zero here, what we're going to do is first off, we are going to say if global.alpha is less than or equal to one, uh, we'll just say equals one, then alarm one equals uh, 10. And then we're going to say if global dot alpha equals zero, or we're going to say zero point zero one, uh, yeah, that. Then alarm two equals ten. So this is just we're basically just going to check. Hey, if 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 it's totally daytime, then we're going to go to alarm one, which will trigger the alpha to decrease. If it's daytime, or, or uh, no, if it's nighttime, then we are going to trigger alarm two, which is going to increase the alpha. So in alarm one, whoops, alarm one, we had it so that it will decrease the alpha. So we're gonna say, if, if global.alpha is greater than 0 0.01, global, dot alpha minus equals 0 0.01 and then alarm actually we'll do this we gotta put it in brackets and then alarm 1 equals 10 actually you know let's create this let's make this into a variable and let's call it shift and this will be the time it takes to shift So we'll create this a variable shift, and, and for now we'll equal it to 10. All right, so let's duplicate this and go to alarm two here now. And in here we'll say if global alpha is less than one plus equals one, and alarm two equals shift. All right, so now what this is gonna do is basically, oh, and then let's do else alarm zero equals 15 times 30 which is just going to reset it so that we get the we get it to you know shift back and forth so we'll do this as well and then in the draw event here let's just go ahead and draw out the actual value just so I can see because I haven't actually tested this myself 0 plus 10 u underscore y view plus 10 string global dot alpha. All right, just so we can see what we've got going here. So let's go and run the game. All right, so as you can see, the alpha is now one. So if we just wait the 15 seconds here, probably should have done that to like five or so, but that's all right. We'll just wait it out. Uh huh. Okay, so there we go. So now the alpha is decreasing, which means it's turning night. That shift is actually a uh, nice number. It kind of transitions pretty nicely. Go and test that out there. It's going to the 10. It's almost nighttime. 
and it stops at 0 0.01. Cool. So now let's go and wait the 15 seconds now because the alarm zero should have shift or should have shifted back. And now in 15 seconds, we should be actually rising in our day here. Yep, there we go. So now we are now rising back. And it actually looks pretty smooth. I actually kind of like it. So we'll wait to see if this goes all the way back up. Now, one problem you did see here is that our blocks don't actually change color. Our blocks are the daytime block no matter what, which is not cool because that's obviously not realistic. And as you can see, it goes back to one, so that's awesome. So we're going to change that with the blocks. So in our object block here, in the draw event, and this is why I made it global, we're going to say image blend equals make color underscore RGB and we're gonna say 255 times global dot alpha and we're just gonna copy and paste this two more times and also copy this and put it right into the object ghost block and what we're doing here is basically taking the RGB values and sucking the color out of our blocks which is what happens at night Therefore, it makes a more realistic approach. So here we have our blocks, you know, so it's daytime, it looks cool, everything's everything's awesome. And then when it starts to grow night, we should be sucking the color out of our blocks, making it appear as though it's 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 turning night. So you can see you can't really see it yet with our blocks. We, all right, yeah, so it's starting to work. As you can see, our blocks are getting actually darker. Yep, that's starting to work. So as you can see, now the nighttime effect actually, whoa, it actually does help. But for some reason, it just turned to zero, which I'm not quite sure why it did that. Let me go ahead and check. Alrighty, well that actually seems to happen just with the YoYo -Yo compiler, which is very, again, like I said, is very buggy at the moment, and I was just kind of using it just for a kind of upgraded performance, but we'll go ahead and take that off just so I can uh, demonstrate this without having, you know, glitches happen. So I went ahead and just put it down to 5, so we have to wait that 15 seconds, and, uh, but yeah, this system does work, and I think it is pretty cool and efficient. So here we go, we have the value now shooting down. Um, let's move over here. So, as you can see, it's going down, and as as you can see, our block color is draining now. And also, I went to 0 0.01, and by that point, like the blocks were literally just about black. They had about a 25 RGB scale. So I went ahead and just bumped that to 0 0.10 is when it stops. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, the colors are now are now draining, and it actually looks like night. So let's go ahead and wait till it goes down to the zero point one. Yep, and there you can see as as you can see, we have the night, and it, the blocks are super super dark. But I actually kind of like that. So then we can actually make torches and stuff like that, and when I ac actually, you know physically change their blend value types with torches and stuff like that which we will be getting into in the future and you can do the image blend with your player as well I mean it can be done with anything and I, I mean like stuff like you know if we were to do this uh, or, or destroy a block it would still have the same sort of you know the lightness to it so you could you could do it to the block as well and all that fun stuff so leave a like and subscribe let's try for 100 likes this time and I, of course, will see you guys next time. Peace.